What is wrong with this thing? I'm literally like sitting on my floor right now. This is not a good angle. I'm such a bad YouTuber. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's Paige. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to answer a question that I've been getting a lot and that is all about how I edit, how I film, all that kind of thing. Like what program do I use? I'm going to be answering all those questions and like telling you how I do my thumbnails and like add music and sound effects and titles and everything that I do. It's all going to be in this video, okay? <laughs> really quickly, I want to apologize for just being all over the place this last month with videos and posting schedules. I know I haven't been doing a good job at all, but I've been home for winter break for like the last month since December and it's just been crazy. Like I've really been spending a lot of time with my friends and with my family and I don't want to be all showy trying to vlog things all the time. It feels very superficial and annoying and I just wanted to be wholesome, be with my family and friends and really just enjoy my time relaxing before second semester starts up. But don't worry, I am going back to school on the 8th of January so you guys are going to be getting a bunch of more college vlogs and hopefully videos will be coming more regularly every single Sunday. Also, I'm going to be rushing for a sorority so hopefully there'll be a lot of content in that department as well. But yeah, anyway, without further ado, let's Let's get into today's video. I think I'm going to start off by answering some of my most commonly asked questions. The first question that I get asked all the time is what camera do I use? And the answer to that is the Canon G7X. It's kind of a smaller camera but has a little flip screen so that you can see yourself when you're vlogging. It has an autofocus feature which is really nice and convenient for people who are just starting off. The only downside is it's a very expensive camera. So if you're not committed to YouTube or maybe you're just starting out, just stick with your iPhone or whatever camera you have at home. You don't need to go out and purchase this one right away. So besides from that camera, I also use my laptop MacBook Pro to do all my editing and I use something called an external hard drive because video footage takes up a lot of space, like a lot of gigabytes on your computer and the internal drive that I have on here is definitely not capable of holding as much as I need it to. So this can hold like a crap ton of like gigs on it. So I just plug this in and it has all my projects and stuff saved onto here. The next question I get all the time is what editing software do I use? <laughs> And the answer to that one is Final Cut Pro. I know there are more professional programs out there like Adobe Premiere and stuff, but this one has worked perfectly for me. Like it was very easy for me to teach myself how to do it. You can easily just watch YouTube videos like this one online to figure out how to like get used to the program. Highly recommend Final Cut Pro. It is kind of an investment. I think it was $300 right off the bat but I bit the bullet and did it and it's been so worth it. Like, it's so much better than iMovie, I'm telling you. It's worth the investment if you're gonna do it. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into how I actually use Final Cut Pro. The first thing I do after I film, obviously, is to import all the footage. So I'll create a new event, create a new project, and then I'll just import all that footage into the project. So I'll start off by just doing a rough cut. I'll move all the footage into the timeline and just cut out the places where I'm not looking at the camera or I'm not talking or I'm talking gibberish just like that. I'll cut those parts out so that it's just all the material that I want. And once that's out of the way, I'll go back and start adding all the effects and the titles and everything else. So I'll let you know how I do that right now. <laughs> Ow. Okay, we're back. So I'm going to show you guys how I add my titles, which is like adding text to your video. So all you have to do is go up to this little button over here in the corner, which has a T on it for titles. And then you can just click that and there's a bunch that you can choose from. I usually use this one called custom. So you just drag that over your clip, extend it to whatever length you want. And then you can go into the little side options over here on the right and change everything from like the font to the size to the tracking. Like you can change a lot. There's a lot you can do. You can also change the outline so you can give it a border or you can give it a shadow. You can even change the style so you can make it 2D or 3D, kind of like I'm doing here. Another thing that I like to do a lot is I'll go to the build in, build out section and I'll choose the one called typewriter. And then when you type your text, you can change the duration to make it either very long or very short. So when it's very long, it takes a long time for it to type. And then when it's very short, it comes in really fast. You can see that's what I use for this video to make that slurp come up and appear on the screen like that. So it's pretty cool. And you can add like a sound effect over that of the typewriter key so that it sounds like it's typing it, you know? That's how I do the titles. It's really nothing fancy. It's just basic stuff that already comes downloaded on Final Cut Pro. <laughs> Another thing I want to talk about is definitely the effects that I use because I do use a couple ones. So if you go to this little square right here on your screen, you can change all sorts of things regarding the crop. So if I change the trim, it's going to like trim the frame of the shot a little shorter. Um, you can also affect the crop and make it like much more zoomed into your face or whatever you want. So it'll look like this. 
You could also use this tool called Ken Burns where you can adjust the end frame so that when you play that clip back, it's going to move in the direction where you move the end frame. So when you play it back, it looks something like this. Another tool that I like to use, this one's a little more advanced. I don't know if everyone knows about this, but it's when you know how sometimes YouTubers will have the camera zoom in here and then there and it like moves very quickly back and forth to a bunch of different places. But the way to do that is to go to the crop section and then click this little button in the left corner there. It looks like a little diamond kind of. And you can adjust your frame to where you want it to be and then click the arrow forward so it'll skip ahead a couple frames and move the box again. So it'll continue to move as you move it. I don't know if that made sense, but hopefully you'll understand what I'm doing from the video here. So then when you play it back, it'll look something like this. And yeah, you could just move it around the entire screen, whatever. You can add sound effects. So Final Cut actually comes pre-downloaded with a bunch of effects already on it. So you can see here on the side, you can scroll through all the options. There are a ton to choose from. So sometimes I'll use this frame option to give my text or footage a cool border. Sometimes I'll use the fisheye, usually for like comedic effect. You can put that somewhere over the video. Um, sometimes I use the sensor if I want to blur something. You never know what might be showing that you got to cover up. Sometimes I'll actually use the effects on my titles too. So if you have a title, you can click and drag like the underwater effect or maybe bad TV effect or whatever on top of that title and then it'll make it look really cool. Um, another thing I like to do is add a little film overlay. So I'll just literally type into YouTube damaged film overlay and a bunch will pop up. And then you can just download this video by copying the link and pasting that into this online video converter. Literally just type in online video converter and it should come up. And then you can just paste that link and download the video. And then once you have that video, you literally just click it and drag it on top of your other footage. And you can go over to this little option on the side and change the blend mode from normal to add. And it'll get rid of the black background so you just see the cool damage film effect on top which is pretty cool. And you can do that with so many things. Like you can type in any kind of overlay into YouTube and stuff will, like that will come up. So that's a fun little trick that I like to use. Um, another effect I use all the time is this bad TV effect. It looks like that. It's very popular, especially now. A lot of YouTubers use that one and you can mess with the amount or the roll or anything. Oh, speaking of that bad TV effect, one thing that I do all the time on my channel is this little glitch where it like glitches to transition to the next slide. I use that all the time and the way that I do that is using the bad TV effect so I will split my clip into three segments and one of the segments is like the clip that I'm transitioning to if that makes sense and I'll put the one that I'm transitioning to in the middle and then I will add the bad TV effect to each one of those segments and change the amount and the roll for each one so not all of them have the same thing and then when you play it back it should look something like this and I add a little glitch sound effect on top of that and it works out nicely. Speaking of the glitch sound effect, if you'd like to know how to download that, keep watching. <laughs> so to do that, I go to YouTube, I will type in glitch sound effect, I will literally find one that I like, copy the link, and then use this website called YouTube to MP3 Converter, paste the link in there, and then you can download the, si um, the sound effect really easily. So yeah, so some of the sound effects that I use all the time are like the VCR one. Uh, sometimes I'll use the bottle cork if like something is popping up on the screen. Sometimes I use the little oof, the little Roblox oof sound. Ooh! If I'm like, I don't know, trying to do something funny. I just get them all from YouTube. You, look, you can look up anything you want and they have pretty much everything there. Okay, so that's like a majority of the editing that I do. Next, this is a big question. You guys ask me about this all the time and that is how I do my thumbnails. And I actually make my thumbnails like entirely on my phone. This ratchet little iPhone 8. So anyone can do this, guys. I'll just explain the steps right now. Okay, so if I don't remember to pose for a thumbnail, which I literally almost never do, then I will have to go through the video and kind of screenshot moments that I think would make a good thumbnail or look good in a thumbnail. Um, and then I'll go to this app called Fonto. I just go to the plain image option and then custom size. And I change the dimensions to 1280 by 720 since that's the size of YouTube's thumbnail dimensions. And then I'll just start to add some of the pictures that I screenshotted from my videos. I'll usually resize them or whatever to make it look nice. Once I'm happy with how it looks, I'll save it to my camera roll and open up an app called PixArt, which is the best app ever. Like, you can do everything on that app. Anyway, so I'll open up that picture I just saved and I go to the Add Photo option on the bottom there. Then this is something I do pretty often. I'll use the eraser tool to erase the background of that picture. It's super annoying, very tedious. 
so I'll just speed that up for you guys but that part takes forever um, once I'm done with that something else I like to do is outline my figure so it helps make it pop a little bit more when you're scrolling through the thumbnails I don't know that's just like a personal preference thing you don't have to do this so to do that I use the little draw tool on the bottom I'll change the color to white I'll make the size like 11 and I use this textured brush option here and yeah then I just outline around my cutouts again very tedious but it really makes the outfits or whatever I'm trying to showcase stand out a bit more so I think it's worth it in the end so that's what it looks like when it's finished something else I like to do on this app is add stickers so Pixart actually comes pre-downloaded with a ton of stickers to choose from so I'll usually look up something like aesthetic stars and choose something from there then you can resize or transform the stickers to your liking you can even use the eraser tool to erase part of the sticker so it like looks like it's behind you if that makes sense there's just a bunch of fun things to mess around with so i'll always try out something new i usually like to test out a couple options with different stickers and see which one looks best to me um, once I'm happy with how it looks, I'll just save that to my camera roll and go to Lightroom so I can add the filter. I would say the filter on Lightroom is what makes the biggest difference in my thumbnails. Like, you can add, like, visco filters or turn up the saturation, but it's really not gonna, like, make your thumbnail pop and stand out like this does. So on Lightroom, I actually use presets that I bought off of Etsy, like, really long time ago, over the summer. I just randomly bought a pack. I really don't remember the name that I got because I did do this, like, so randomly. But there are definitely a ton of presets there to browse, so if you're interested go check it out I'm sure you can find one that you like um, after I add the preset I'll just adjust the exposure and saturation and even like individual colors in the photo until I'm happy with how it looks and you can see here like it makes a huge difference it really is necessary finally I'll just go back to Fonto so I can add the text I usually make the stroke like five or six and then I'll add a little bit of a shadow this is the font that I'm using by the way um, sometimes I also like to add a little curve to the text just to make it look a little more interesting and yeah there you have it That's the magic behind how I do my thumbnails. Okay, and the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is my music YouTube has gotten a lot stricter with copyright so before back in the old days like really before my channel blew up I used to just look up in YouTube like oh copyright like royalty free music and then I would just download some of those songs but that doesn't work anymore because a lot of those songs are getting copyrighted now, so don't recommend doing that. Now I'm actually using a website called hellothematic.com. It is awesome. Basically, you can just sign up for free as a content creator or whatever. And then the whole point of the website is they basically just have a bunch of different artists who put their songs up here. And as long as you give them credit in the description box, you're free to use all of their songs copyright free which is really cool because there's a lot of cool music on here too. You can also go to like staff picks and they have like what's popular at the time or what's trending. But yes, that is all I had to say to you beautiful people. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you have any more questions about editing or YouTube or anything in general, just leave it down below. I'm going to be back in school soon. I'm definitely going to be busy with Rush coming up in a whole new semester of new classes, but I'm going to try to do better at uploading every Sunday and hopefully I'll stick to that schedule this time. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in next week's video.